Friend, do you have a second so we can talk about a snake ass bitch named Amy? <laughs> Seriously. You know what? Amy is everything that y'all think Sonny Mings from Love and Marriage Huntsville is. Amy just showed me in this episode, bitch, you been plotting. You been a plotting ass bitch. You, something in you hate, hate, hates Bambi and Sierra. It's giving you always wanted they spot. It's giving you came on the show. You willing to go through, go get into it and come at whoever it takes for you to get on. Because last season, remember, it was Rennie. But Rennie got you up off her ass. And this season, you just going too hard for Bambi. And to say some shit like, I hope it curves like you said it was. And I hope, what she say? I hope it's everything you said it was. Damn, bitch, you remember that shit about my nigga? I'm sorry, Amy need to get skull dragged. She need to get skull drug across Piedmont. All the way down to Lenox Mall. Exactly, up to Phipps Plaza. Go ahead, take her down to the toast on Lenny. Because I would drag this bitch up and down the streets a <laughs> buckhead. But that's just me. Anyway, <laughs> hey, friend what's up y'all happy hump day um sorry i missed y'all yesterday but i'm back bitch <laughs> i'm back and i'm better i hope y'all having a cocktail getting y'all a little some some we having lunch at my job today girl to celebrate um us making all this damn money <laughs> so i was like come let me go ahead and talk about um Love and Mary Tunsville and give y'all a quick review about this dog ass bitch named Amy. And what really kind of pissed me off was it was so many bitches in the comments on Instagram. I'm looking at the little posts and shit. It's so many bitches in the comment. I love Amy. They can never make me uh hate Amy. Amy read the girls. Amy. Any woman, I ain't even gonna say bitch. Any woman who condones the shit that Amy was saying and condone a bitch being friends with you and then as soon as she not friends with you she tell your ex-husband how she wanted to fuck him anyway first of all you not my type of bitch stay away from me make sure you subscribe though friend <laughs> you could be a hoe i don't mind if you suck dick in the alley told me girl he gave me 500 dollars. i had to go ahead and slurp him up that ain't got nothing to do with me bitch we could still go for lunch you taking me to lunch you, know I mean? you the one came up today but don't not no <laughs> not when it applies to me and my man to me that's just some snake ass scandalous plotting ass shit and that's just not in my ministry like i don't scheme and plot on motherfuckers like that you know what i'm saying anyway girl so let's get into this loving uh loving hip-hop um atlanta review so this afternoon i've been hearing about all of them tea <laughs> with tasha k <laughs> F and male ass. We gonna talk about this later. I gotta hate this little Mark. I ran into the damn door off some tequila one day. God don't like ugly. I told y'all I, I work in the hood. Um, yeah, I was tipsy one day, and I'm already clumsy. I'm like accident prone. Like if I come to your house, like I'm the type that accidentally fall into the blinds and break them down. The <laughs> anyway, child, my dumb ass was tipsy and hit my damn head. And now I got this little mark to remind me to stop drinking. Anyway, are y'all having a cocktail after work? <laughs> anyway, so I haven't heard about what the fuck going on. Tasha K, I heard threatening male talking about old male sleeping with a married man, basically reiterating all the allegations that Martel put in his lawsuit about male fucking with Jason. Da -da -da -da. Then Mel was being funny. So Mel um just got to the reunion out in LA, child. And she was in the car at dinner. She just posted. She kept posting Jason. First of all, I don't even remember who Jason was, y'all. I vaguely remember him. I knew he was tall and cornmeal or whatever. But I didn't really correlate. Don't Jason remind y'all of Jason Pittman off the game? <laughs> not Jay, not Bill Jason. It's Jason Pittman from the game. Let me find out, Mill. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, child, so Mel been posting him or whatever, being shady. You can tell she don't give a fuck about none of that. In comes Tasha K with these allegations about Mel saying that, you know, she got receipts and da 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 da. It's giving Martel and Ari called Mel. I mean, Martel submitted those allegations because he wanted them to be public. 
the judge strict stricken those stricken that from the record so the girls can't you know ain't got no storyline to run with they can't say male sleeping with a married man so martel bald-headed ass then goes to tasha k because he knows she ain't got no integrity and she'll post anything allegedly you know based on the cardi b situation and now she's threatening to report on it unless mel want to talk to her do i think mel gonna talk to her not a motherfucking chance but that do make me think about when ari was talking about how the last lab hate to see her coming i tell you what i wish tasha k would try to release some stuff mel i'm gonna need you to sue martel and the fact that the judge <laughs> struck that those allegations from the record and then in turn you went and gave that information to a blogger <laughs> which the judge striking the information from the record means that it has no credibility a judge in court decided that it had that that had no merit your statements had no merit so for you to give that to a blogger is intentional it's slanderous and if i was male i'ma go ahead tack on them charges with ari tack on ari to conspiracy that revenge p charge that um martell about to get convicted of and go to jail for go ahead check uh tack on ari as the co-conspirator then tack on some harassment and then let's see what ralph gotta say because whatever receipts tasha k got whatever these receipts that tasha k got if she got pictures if she got text messages whatever y'all better tread lightly whatever if tasha k do a video whatever information she drop i hope mill get to the bottom of that information and whoever supplied her with those receipts you going to jail whoever tapped my phone you going to jail whoever put surveillance up in my house without my consent you going to jail exactly y'all last might be writing a check that your ass can't cash but that ain't got nothing to do with me <laughs> we'll talk about love and marriage trust me shit later on today right now let's talk about this love and hip-hop shit child i'm gonna make this quick because i think our food coming here in like 15 20 minutes okay okay let's talk about snake ass amy and uh the tight face <laughs> <laughs> why do they keep calling these girls tight face y'all better learn child we got melanin for a reason all you got to do is put some ice and some turmeric on your face do a little lemon ginger honey scrub every you know once a week or whatever and you cook you good you don't need that anyway fuck all of that okay so we start the episode episode off with sierra and carly they on a double date with they men because you know they have an engagement party together of course they talking about amy and her diss song and stuff sierra like how do you feel about amy coming there because her and amy cool i don't think carly that cool with amy i think that carly just being messy <laughs> carly just being messy carly or whatever <laughs> so that's why she you know inviting amy because if she was that cool with sierra and she used to be cool with uh bambi she'll just tell amy she can't come but we all know that uh carly is the granny that never stops or whatever um and then carly mentions to her that her daughter's um father passed away and her daughter had to pull the plug which is really really sad so then in like the in the scene after that i'm just gonna talk about everybody like you know it may be out of order so and then in a later scene we see carly with her daughter ain't her daughter named jasmine we see da and her daughter is so carly daughter is so pretty carly daughter is really really pretty anyway we see her and her daughter and it's really really sad like in the scene her daughter is crying and she's saying she feels she, she feels guilty um because she had to pull the plug she said she was trying to stay strong carly sitting there crying with her apparently carly was married to her daddy or whatever she said they was a family so she feels really really bad um i wonder why carly wasn't there with her when she had to do it maybe her daughter didn't want carly there or i'm not sure what the whole tea, tea was with that but um so they start talking about that and then the daughter breaks down and it made me so sad because the daughter was like that was the hardest thing i ever had to do in my life and it, it really kind of broke my heart because like writing my mama obituary was the saddest thing i ever had to do in my life so i'm sure anybody who's ever had to plan you know your parent or your child you know funeral or do anything it's just 
it's a full breakdown. I ain't gonna lie, I had to call the cemetery the other day and I broke the fuck right on down. <laughs> I don't care if it's been a year, five years, five minutes. It's always gonna hurt you, whatever. And she was just talking about how, you know, it just breaks her heart that she can't call him no more, da 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 I loved seeing that side of Carly. I loved seeing Carly being a mother. You know what I'm saying? Like, Carly, outside of um, the duck lips and all the men and the fake ass shit you be doing with these hoes, I would... Carly could stay provided Carly gives us more of her relationship with her daughter. I would like to see how does your daughter turn out when you, with you being, you know, being the way you is with having Carly Red as a mama and what you and your daughter relationship look like. And let's see how your daughter navigate the streets of Atlanta with her mama being Carly Red. You can stay under those conditions only, duck face. <laughs> anyway, so then we get Scrappy and Spice. They in the studio. Um, no, they're not in the studio. They doing that video for bling, bling, bling. Have y'all heard that Scrappy and Spice song? I kind of like it. I be hearing it like, you know, around or whatever. Is it just me or do Scrappy always look like he hot as a motherfucker or drunk as a motherfucker? You know they said um, Mama D allegedly got an alcohol addiction, but it's giving and Chaotic said that too when he was getting into it with Scrappy. Scrappy always look like he is inebriated. You know what I'm saying? It don't look like hard drugs. It don't look like, you know, I would never put that jacket on somebody. It don't look like he do hard drugs. But why do it always look like he really high or really drunk? That ain't cute. That ain't cute. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, so they talking about Amy and the whole diss track. He like, uh, I'm not fucking with Amy like that. I'm single. He said he ain't fucking with Erica like that. He just did a birthday post for Erica the other day, and it was giving friendship vibes. So for all of the first baby mamas that go up for Erica and say, he go always love Erica. No the fuck he won't. And mind you, while we talking about Bambi, Erica, and Amy as he got a whole during this time he got a whole baby mama and another bitch that he was having a threesome with unprotected mind you so whether he fucking erica trying to start a business with erica still trying to be cool with bam his ex-wife because they cordial right now trying to fuck on amy because amy said they ain't fucked yet which i don't believe it do you do you believe uh amy uh scrapping and fucked i do and then he had a whole nother bitch who her and her friend <laughs> had a threesome with him and he got a bitch pregnant. Y'all must not believe in uh, chlamydia down in, in, in Atlanta. Uh, in Atlanta. In Atlanta, y'all don't believe in condoms, do you? I promise people act like they ain't go to health class. Remember in health class, they showed you them pictures of people when they, like, general, I don't know where y'all went to school at, but at U City, they showed us pictures in health class of these genitals when they had, like, herpes, chlamydia, syphilis, da da da. And the little, the little pita weeder, it looked like it had a flower around it. Ugh, girl, I don't know. Anyway, these hoes is crazy. Amy, you are fucking crazy. <laughs> All of y'all hoes, any hoe that'll fuck with Scrappy at this point is a crazy bitch from hell. Yeah, I don't know why this sun is blazing down on me like this. Anyway, child. So, anyway, when they was talking about the Amy diss track, Scrappy and Spice was like, oh, well, I like the diss track. It was creative. It was artistic, yada, yada, yada. Spice agreed with Scrappy. First of all, Scrappy, if Bambi dot your motherfucking eye, then you deserve it. Because ain't no way you bring another bitch in the picture and you approve her making a diss track about your baby mama. That's going to affect your co-parenting. And I hate when dudes do that. First of all, your loyalty is with your baby mama. Keep these hoes in check. You can have a million hoes. Tell them hoes to keep your baby mama or your ex-wife name out of their mouth. That's how you keep your business together and in check. You need to set boundaries for these new hoes. Because if she come in as a new hoe, I'm talking about Amy, making diss tracks about your ex-wife, then you can never really mess with Amy like that because it's going to be out of control. But you know Scrappy is a messy, tacky bitch anyway. So he always with the shits. That's why Shay used to be wanting to fight Erica and all type of shit. But this is what I did, Pete. Spice go say, oh yeah, I like the diss track too. Come on, say y'all my spice. Wasn't you trying to act like last uh, episode that, oh, I didn't know and I wouldn't do that. Spice a fake ass bitch too now. Because not you sitting with 
with him and around Amy, you like, oh, okay, the diss track, cool. I'm cool with the diss track. But then when you around Sierra and Bambi, it's like, oh, I didn't know I wouldn't let my... No. And then how you doing a cast album and you want real rappers and shit, but you letting these, you letting this bitch Amy diss the other cast members? Like, no. And Amy is a new cast member. Bambi and, them, Bambi and Sierra seasoned. No, and that's why Jock didn't want to do the damn uh, album. You see, Jock sat down with Spice as well and basically told her, no, I was coming here to bring fun vibes and this was going to be some good shit. And y'all know, outside of Jock and his drama with these hoes, he has a good standing in the music industry. He got a radio show. He got multiple businesses in Atlanta. He don't be involved in no... If it, if it ain't got nothing to do with Coochie, Jock said I ain't about that mess. You said what? <laughs> If it ain't got nothing to do with me fucking the bitch, I ain't got time for that mess. So he basically told Spice, no, I'm not doing the cast album. You indulging in this diss track shit with Amy is lame and I ain't for it. That's what Jock basically told that bitch. Anyway, so Spice blew her ass is a fake ass mess. That's what I got out of that situation. Speaking of Jock ass, so Kendra and Jock, they talk. They kind of recap what happened with Mo. He she back it was the same shit child she brung up that the girl said oh well i could have him if i wanted him jock never said that bitch can't have me jock never said oh that bitch was wrong oh that jock never said any of that then kendra said i don't think they ever messed around you was a damn fool bitch you the smartest dumbest bitch i ever met <laughs> you the smartest dumbest bitch i ever met in my whole entire life bitch if you don't think that Mo fuck Jock or know that she could fuck Jock. And your man is not adamantly denying the fact that he would fuck her. But he ain't gonna tell you anyway. Anyway, of course, she threatening divorce like always. I'm so sick of Kendra. And then she was talking to Yandy about it early in the episode. Why the fuck do y'all keep talking about Yandy? Because apparently Yandy let him in DC's fuck. Fast forward to Yandy and uh, Zell. So Yandy and Zell go to lunch. So Zell said he's he was apologizing to Yandy about the shit that he said um at the baby shower or whatever about Mendeecees. He was like, because Yandy ain't been nothing but nice to him or whatever. And he didn't mean to shade her like that. He was like, I should have let her slide. Mind you, he said, I don't take back what I said now. <laughs> he said, now hold up, bitch. I'm apologizing for being a, a messy bitch. But I ain't apologizing for the content, for the contextual layers of this shit. <laughs> Your husband's still a hoe. <laughs> so anyway, girl, so they talking or whatever. Yandy brings up, she was like, we finally back in a good place after that Alexis Sky shit. Do y'all remember a few months ago, Alexis Sky went on live with that dude anthony who be doing uh chaotic youtube people talking about all of the real housewives atlanta girls and everything used to be sheree friend he messy 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 bottom child anyway so alexis sky and him went on there and they was basically talking shit about mendeecees cheating and allegedly fucking with some hoes and shit so yandy was telling zell like yeah we got all over that shit we finally in a good place yada 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 the whole jasmine thing was just brought up so that's probably why yandy was like walking away when kirkman was talking about jasmine sam and dc's be in the club and shit because they had just got past the alexis scott shit going public so yandy was trying to be ray charles to the bullshit why she trying to be Ray Charles to the bullshit? Her comes out like, hey, you ho. <laughs> Stop laughing because me and DC's out in the street. Girl, so then in the damn confessionals, Zell trying to, you could tell Zell trying to get his shit together. Girl, he like, yeah, and I apologize to Yandy because, you know, that's some really fucked up shit. Yandy, you know, been nothing but nice to me. So, yeah. And the producers was like, well, what is the street saying about Mendeecees? He was like, bitch, let me tell you. <laughs> he got messy once again. His decency only lasted for like three and a half minutes, child. Because as soon as the producers asked him that, he was like, the streets is saying that Mendeecees is for the streets. Yandy, don't let, Yandy, don't be over there talking to Rashida about Kirk. 
and Jasmine. I don't want to see you over there talking to uh Kendra about Jock either, bitch. You need to be talking to the bitch in the mirror about your man Mendeecee's. Mendeecee's fine as a motherfucker, but I would still go ahead and slap the dog shit out of him. I'll slap them curls out of his head. Exactly, girl. So, if we go leave Yandy on her, if we go leave Snake Eyes Andy on her, Yandy, trash can Yandy, Bitch, you got to talk about Mendeecees and what the fuck going on. And Mendeecees, you cannot smile your way out of this one. You, I will punch them fronts out. You can't smile your way out of this one. What's happening at the club with Jasmine? Do you have Yandy Amex card? Are you getting your sucked in the alley? What is the real tea? On the next episode, Yandy get, get bouted with somebody like she want to fight. Yandy is a trash talker. We ain't never seen this girl fight for real. I think she all talk. I think she a punk ass bitch. I think that she be front for the cameras and I think she try to portray like she perfect, like they said in New York. And I wanna know who 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 man DC fucking in, in Atlanta. My Atlanta girlies. Drop down in the comments. Tell me if man DC's fucking with your sister, your auntie, your grandma. He might like them older. <laughs> the girl at the gas stations. We are on the lookout for man DC. And who is he fucking with? I'm going to have to go find out. Let me go. I was getting ready to say, let me go search Mendeecee's page. But you know, niggas, the girl that they fucking with, they ain't liking none of her pictures. They don't follow each other. The girl that your man be fucking with, that bitch ain't nowhere to be found. He might like her cousin picture on her daddy's side. But then you're going to have to dig deep. <laughs> And I ain't got the time. Because if Yandy don't give a fuck, we do not give a fuck. Anyway, do y'all think Mandy's is cheating? I would cheat on Yandy. <laughs> if she was my bitch. <laughs> no, so tell me, do y'all think Mandy's is cheating on Yandy? Do y'all think Yandy know? And she just playing oblivious. Like she, tell, like she told that girl, don't turn a blind eye. Duh, bitch. <laughs> what is you talking about? I guess. Anyway, um... So, yeah. So, we get to all of that. Zell and Yandy, Amy and Scrappy. So, Amy and Scrappy go out on a date. He finally takes this bitch out on a date after this bird been chirping for the last three episodes about how she fuck with Scrappy. I would never tell a motherfucker that I fuck with somebody who I ain't never been out on no date with. The date is step one. I wouldn't even... Until we go out on a date, you a figment of my imagination. I swear to God. <laughs> I tell dudes that all the time. Until you take me out on a date, you a figment of my imagination, bitch. You do not exist. I'm not inter internalizing your career, how many kids you got. I, girl, fuck you. Anyway, so they finally go out on a date. It's a childish-ass day at this little jumping gym thing. It did look like it was fun, though. So they talking. Bambi said, she immediately says, Bambi said that, you, Amy says, Bambi said that you was a Debbie Downer. You nothing like that. Why you bringing up Bambi? You on a date with Scrappy. You been wanting to fuck with him, you said, since he was married. So why you bringing up the shit that Bambi told you about him? How the fuck do you remember everything that this... You remember that she said he was a Debbie Downer. You remember that uh, she said that he had a curved dick. You remember... I guess she said the sex is good. A bitch, not, a bitch like Amy... Yeah. I'm sorry. I hope they have a reunion. I hope they have a reunion. And I hope Bam channel her inner Jocelyn Hernandez when she walked across the stage. And bloop, 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 because I'm sorry. If a bitch ain't never deserved it, a bitch like Amy deserved it. And like I said, I used to like Amy. And the hoes that go up for Amy, you not my type of bitch. You a gutter rat type of bitch. Because what type of woman who was your friend remembers all the shit you were saying about her husband and then in turn uses it when she trying to fuck with him to get revenge on you i guess so then she also um she asked him have he fucked erica or bambi he like is this interrogation basically scrappy ain't answered it it was given it ain't none of your motherfucking business hoe and why are you weird if you committed to being a hoe ass bitch and fuck with scrappy why do you care if he's still fucking with bambi or erica Ain't you trying to get the spot? Best twat gets the spot. You should be trying to put it on them yourself. And hopefully, girl, Amy makes bad decisions. The fact that she was with that broke-ass nigga, I don't, first of all, I'll take this back. I don't know the boy Mozzie like that. 
I didn't watch their little YouTuber podcast or whatever. All I know of the boy Mozzie is what I've seen on Love and Hip Hop. And from what I've seen on Love and Hip Hop, she's always complaining about how he broke, he's not trying to elevate, and he can't even pay half of the bills. So first of all, you the type of bitch that go 50-50 on bills, you ain't my type of bitch in the first place. <laughs> and the fact that you keep struggling for six years with a man who can't even go half with you on the bills lets me know you like losers and you make bad decisions in men. And you're jealous. You was probably jealous that whole time you was friends with Bambi. And the whole time you was friends with Sierra, hold on, I'm a, I'm a, we gonna put a pin in that. So first of all, she was talking to uh, Scrappy. Started asking her about chaotic. Like since you asking about whether or not I'm fucking Erica, and bam, what's going on with you and chaotic? She like, oh nothing. We friends. Um, I just want to have fun. Scrappy like good, cause I ain't chasing nobody. She like, I'm okay with that. I'm just out here having fun. If a bitch tell you some shit like I'm just out here having fun, that mean I just want to fuck. I just want to fuck. I'm cool with fucking. We ain't got to have no relationship. We ain't got to do nothing. And you know what? That's where bitches get like fucked up. Because I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if I do just want to have fun. I just want to have fun. You stupid because guess what? As women, if we like somebody and we just want to have fun... If you go give up the cat to him and you start spending time with him, you're going to start developing feelings for him over time. You might just want to have fun in June, but by December and he been knocking the box out, you know, pushing the lace front back and shit, and you spending time with him, then you might want a relationship. And the second you want a relationship, he going to revert back to this conversation in June and say, I told your ass that I ain't want no relationship and I just want to have fun. That's why I tell every man up front, Nope, I want a relationship. I want a relationship. I don't give a fuck if this nigga co eyes cock like a pistol. His eyes can be cock like a motherfucking pistol. Uh, can't dress. Uh, glasses foggy. Receding hairline. Girl, in six months, this man might get a hair transplant. Learn how to dress. Dick on fire. Get a, a knee replacement. And then he walking around like big dick dingaling. And now I want him to be in a relationship with me. So no. Ladies, if you out here dating, never tell a man you don't, you don't know relationship because you never know where that shit may go. Nah, bitch. I'll, I'm always open for a relationship. Even if I don't like your dirty ass now, you got margarine on your teeth. Listen, Mr. Buttersworth, I do want <laughs> the possibility of a relationship. So anyway, Amy a dumb hoe. So we get to the damn event, y'all. So we at the motherfucking event. Everybody there... Amy, uh, Mendeecee's cheating ass, and Yandy, Sierra, Carly, because it's their engagement party, Bam there, Zelda. So they get, the, you know, everybody like, hey, we're going to keep it cordial, we're going to keep it cute. Sierra initially seen Amy, she like, we're going to keep it cordial, we're going to keep it cute. This is my engagement party. I didn't spend a lot of money on this. I just got new fillers. Oh, I ain't got time for you. So Zell immediately starts being messy and like, uh, so since we talking, <laughs> Is you fucking scrappy because that's the rumor. She like, nah, I'm not fucking scrappy, uh, but we talking and shit, but we ain't fucked yet. Uh, yeah. So then Chaotic chimes in. Chaotic there with Erica. <laughs> Erica Banks, child. When Chaotic said, he was like, me and Erica kind of on and off. Like, uh, if I get new money, then she come around. If she get new booty, then I come around. <laughs> Girl, Chaotic and Erica Banks seem like they both for the streets. Chaotic fine with being a trick if he could touch on some big booty. And Erica like, come on, little boy, I'll take your money. <laughs> Erica and Chaotic, they seem like they probably fun to be around, child. I'll kick it with them out of anybody else on the cast. So anyway, Chaotic gonna say, I wonder if Scrappy claiming you like you claiming him. <laughs> Girl, first of all, I do feel like Chaotic feels some type of way that Amy was just fucking with him, bitch. Then you left Chaotic saying you was getting back with Mozzie. Now you out here, now you out here claiming scrap my ex best friend. That is some, this is some whole ass shit. This, Amy is giving hope. Everything about her is giving hope. Miserable hoe at that. And they kept calling her angry Amy. Girl, anyway. So <laughs> Chaotic says, 
I wonder if Scrap claiming you like you claiming him because Scrap barely say that he talking to Amy. He just took her on a date, but Amy is screaming from the window to the wall that her and Scrap is talking. She like, yeah, we've been out on a couple of days. Anyway, soon as Chaotic said, <laughs> I wonder if Scrappy claiming you like you claiming him. She said, I don't know because you don't claim Erica Banks when she not around. You be trying to talk to me or something. Erica said, hold on, come on, Sayama. <laughs> Girl, I ain't gonna lie. Amy clocked his motherfucking tea. And, <laughs> and Chaotic was in the confessional. Like, <laughs> man, that bitch Amy be tripping. <laughs> he was like, man, that bitch Amy be tripping. Like, ha, ha, ha. Chaotic, you better stay out there. Like, you should have stayed out of women's business. Because the second you said that little <laughs> slick shit about Scrappy claiming uh, Amy, she like, okay, let's bring the attention to you and Erica Banks. <laughs> and Erica was looking like that. What's say, huh, bitch? <laughs> Erica Banks, low key, she didn't say nothing in these scenes. But her facial expressions this whole time, when Amy and them started getting into it, watch Erica Banks' facial <laughs> She was like, oh, no, like, this shit is crazy. This shit had me cracking up. And I noticed right after she said that, they edited the scene. I think Erica Banks must have cursed Chaotic out because she quit to curse his dumb ass out. So I think they she probably cursed Chaotic out and then they edited it out. But anyway, so then she said, uh, Amy continues like, no, she always thought Scrappy was fine. And she said she would have talked to him. She said she would have talked to Scrappy a long time ago, but she thought uh, Bambi was her friend. But now that she know that Bambi not her friend, now she cool to talk to Scrappy. Zell was like, no, bitch, that's not a correlation. You talking about a, a nigga that you fucked with 12 years ago. Meanwhile, Bambi was married to him and she had kids. I'm so glad Zell said that. Like, sometimes you got to put it in a bitch face. And I don't think Amy is stupid. I think that Amy's just trying to play games. Like, it's okay. No, ho, it's not okay. Then Sierra chimes in and she talking about, Sierra was talking about her behind her back. Sierra was like, no, bitch, I talked about you to your face. I never said anything behind your back. Which she right. So then she starts going off on Sierra. Like, yeah, because this your engagement party. This your six engagement with your six man. And da 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 you know what? And she was reading. She was calling her a tight face. She was like, your surgery looks terrible. And Zell was like, first of all, Amy, you look like Wesley Snipes. He said she looked like Wesley Snipes on The Fugitive. Amy does give a little too long food tease. Now, Amy is a pretty girl. Let's not front. Amy is a pretty ass girl. But Amy got some strong ass features. I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. Amy gives model girl pretty. And a lot of models got some strong ass faces. No offense, but some of them models that be really, really skinny. The reason a lot of designers like them because they face is androgynous. And for your, for the people who don't know androgynous, it means, you know, they can pass for both sexes sometimes. And I'm sorry. Amy has a very sharp she has very sharp features. Mind you, she beautiful as a motherfucker, but let's not the gate. Let's let's not act like <laughs> let's not act like Amy perfection. You not perfection to be calling other hoes ugly all willy-nilly. Because if Bambi looks like a reindeer or whatever the fuck you be calling her, then you look like that horse off that donkey from Shrek. It's giving Eddie Murphy voice donkey from Shrek. I'm sorry. If Bambi look like a reindeer or whatever you be calling her, then you look like the donkey off a of Shrek. Let's call a thing a thing. Both of y'all literally on the same level of beauty. Amy got a badass face and a pretty ass body. Bambi do too. Both of y'all may favor born yard animals. I apologize. Y'all still some beautiful black queens, but stop. let's not go for people's looks. You see how that work? We could go either way with it, bitch. Anyway, now, here we go. Now, Sierra looks... <laughs> <laughs> Sierra used to be so much prettier before she started doing that shit with her face. Now her face look too tight. It's giving Animaniac. Do y'all remember? It's Animani, total the insane, the Animaniac. Anyway. The whole time Amy was talking about uh, Sierra though and all her mini men, this is what it's giving. It's giving that those six years that Amy was with Mozzie doing them videos, trying to come up on half of the rent plus his half 
you was jealous that Sierra kept getting all of these men, had all of this money, and you was Bambi friend while Bambi was dealing with Scrap, who had money. You, your friends, your friends that you was around, they had men with money that was helping them, and you was dealing with broke ass Mozzie, and you was jealous the whole time. Amy was never either one of their friends because the second she got the opportunity, now she coming for y'all spot. She coming, she talking shit about you having multiple men, and I don't give a fuck what y'all say. Sierra could have a million men, all of them putting a ring on it, and all of them got money. She never shooter had money. Shooter, shooter, they said shooter helped her build her business. Uh, what Eric had money, he didn't have as much money as her, but he was far from broke. And his new dude got money, girl. Amy gives a jealous, miserable ass bitch just because you was dealing with a nigga for six years and he broke as a motherfucker. And she said that's the love of her life. Just because the love of your life is a broke ass nigga, that don't mean you snake all of your friends and try to take their life. Girl, anyway, so of course she starts getting into it with Bam. Because after she started talking about, you know, uh Sierra Face, Bam is like, why is she here? Like she said, you don't even go here. <laughs> and Amy talking about this Amy's hour. Bam was like, no, it's giving three minutes. <laughs> that, that Amy's hour was cute or whatever, but it's giving three minutes was cute too. <laughs> so the girls were shading each other. That was really cute or whatever. So they end up getting really getting ready to get into it. Amy getting ready to leave. She like, yeah, and if I fuck scrap, I hope it's curved like you said it was, and I hope it's as good as you said it was, bitch. I'm sorry, y'all. This is some snake ass gutter right. The, like I said, the dog ass bitch I think Sonny Minx is, this is this. The being friends with somebody, then fucking your man and trying to steal your man. The Amy is what y'all think Sonny Minx is. Amy is a dog ass bitch. She's making herself look so bad, so unlikable. The type of girls who go up for Amy is not my type of bitch. Um, that was it. They got into it. That was the end of the episode. Next episode is the season finale. Tell me what y'all thought about them getting into it. Sierra couldn't read and she couldn't keep up with the girlies. Sierra just couldn't read, but Amy was a thousand percent wrong in this situation. Amy need her motherfucking ass whoop. If Bambi decides to go ahead and dot Amy, I, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't blink twice. I'd be like, is this some more cream brulee? Because I don't give a fuck about this bitch getting her ass whoop. She deserves it. Exactly. So tell me what y'all thought about the episode. Do y'all think Mendeecees is cheating on Yandy motherfucking ass? Um, do y'all think that Amy, um, was wrong or do y'all think Amy was right for reading the girls and Bambi shouldn't be mad? I don't know y'all. Anyway, so I told y'all, I, um, I skipped over Real Housewives of Potomac, but it was a decent episode. It wasn't all of that to me. The big thing that happened was what them going to the two events and Ashley and Giselle putting the girls out. Giselle was stupid because you just put out a whole bunch of bitches with money that could have donated to your charity, trying to play big boss vet. You ain't the big boss bitch. And as far as Karen, a lot of people was like, oh, Karen was wrong for inviting them, you know, at the last minute. She knew she had that event. Da, da, da. This is my take on it. Karen was wrong for telling the girls at the last minute and inviting them to the event. However, this just Karen's revenge. Did y'all honestly think that Karen was going to let Giselle get away with all of that shade? Do y'all remember when Giselle kept shading her at her birthday party talking about, uh, I guess, the, the alcohol-free drink and da-da-da-da? And when they was at the table, Giselle was shading her. Even when Karen was at Giselle's house and Giselle was talking or whatever, remember Giselle was throwing a little, a little minor shade and Karen was just sitting there like, you know, just smiling and being cute. Y'all thought Karen was gonna let that shit slide? No, Karen probably was in her mind like, <laughs> watch me invite all of these hoes to my shit and they ain't gonna be at your shit. Who the fuck, bitch? I am the grand dame. You think you finna shit? First of all, Karen know how to play with Giselle. She been reading Giselle since the beginning of time. Just cause uh, Robin lived. That don't mean Karen ain't still on your ass, Giselle. Karen probably tries, like, I'll play nice with your ass. But let me go ahead and show this bitch who the fuck I am. Which is probably why she told them girls at the table she want to know who really loyal to her. 
who really loyal to her. That was like to preface that, okay, I'm finna send this invite. It's go, you either go to Giselle's shit or you go to my shit. Bitch, who are you really loyal to? Don't be loyal to, to Giselle or you're going to end up like Robin. You better pick the women team. <laughs> anyway, y'all, I'm going to be out. Make sure y'all comment. Make sure y'all like. Make sure y'all subscribe. I hope y'all have a real good day. Like I said, if some OT come out with the Love and Mary Tunsville shit or some other shit in the streets, I might come uh, go live later or whatever because I'm going to the dentist around three or whatever so i'll be at home early today girl we'll see anyway y'all have a good day i love y'all make sure y'all comment make sure y'all subscribe make sure y'all like and if y'all don't be getting my notifications you may have to turn off my notifications and turn them back on and make sure you subscribe girl youtube be hating on a plus size chocolate girly i don't know what the fuck going on anyway bye y'all